Journey to the End of the Night, a modernist novel by Louis Ferdinand Céline, was initially published in 1932 by Editions de Nouel E.T. Steele, a Parisian publishing house. This semi-autobiographical work revolves around the life and adventures of the cynical anti-hero Ferdinand Bartimeu, spanning several decades from the onset of World War I. While the novel gained prominence within avant-garde literary circles, it faced early resistance from the critical establishment, a common fate for many groundbreaking works. However, Céline's reputation as an anti-Semite and sympathizer of the Axis powers has since cast a shadow over the book's legacy. Leading to ongoing controversy, the story begins with Ferdinand as a medical student in Paris. Despite his political leanings, he is captivated by the spectacle of a military parade and decides to join the French army. Serving as a runner on the front lines, Ferdinand quickly becomes disillusioned with the senseless brutality of war, eroding his fleeting sense of nationalism. During a mission, he encounters Leon Robinson, a fellow soldier and coward, and together, they plot an unsuccessful desertion. Ferdinand is wounded in action, earning him a medal, and is granted leave to Paris for medical treatment. I in Paris, Ferdinand embarks on a passionate affair with Lola, an American volunteer nurse. However, when Lola realizes Ferdinand's efforts to evade further military service, her feelings for him diminish, leading to the end of their relationship. This loss triggers Ferdinand's mental breakdown, resulting in his transfer to various mental hospitals. Eventually declared physically fit but mentally unfit for duty, Ferdinand is discharged. He then embarks on another romantic involvement, this time with Musine, a dancer and violinist. Their relationship ends after a few months, prompting Ferdinand to venture to French West Africa. In the remote reaches of the African interior, Ferdinand establishes a rubber trading post, only to discover it is nothing more than a humble hut. In this unfamiliar territory, Ferdinand assumes the identity of a mysterious traitor, only to realize that the traitor is none other than his old comrade Robinson. Stricken with fever and delirium, Ferdinand inadvertently sets fire to the hut, driven by his disoriented state. He flees the burning hut with only canned stew and 300 francs provided by Robinson, completely lost in his delirious state. As he embarks on his journey towards the coast, his fellow travelers steal his money, leaving him destitute, eventually reaching the coast. Ferdinand finds himself in the company of a Spanish priest who arranges for him to work as an oarsman on a ship bound for America. Upon arriving in New York City, Ferdinand encounters complications with immigration authorities but manages to deceive them and secure employment at the port. Through a series of events, he is assigned the task of delivering a report to an office in the city, which ultimately grants him the opportunity to escape seeking refuge. Ferdinand seeks out Lola, who offers him $100 before sending him away. He then sets off for Detroit and finds employment on the assembly line at Ford Motor Company. In Detroit, he falls in love with a prostitute named Molly, who proposes they settle down together. However, despite his feelings for her, Ferdinand yearns for freedom and decides to depart from the United States. Returning to Paris, Ferdinand completes his medical studies and becomes a doctor. He establishes his practice in Rancy, a poverty-stricken suburb of Paris, where he witnesses firsthand the misery and destitution plaguing society. Earning little money, Ferdinand primarily performs abortions for a living. His involvement with the Henry Wheel family, burdened by the care of their elderly relative living in a shack behind their house, exposes him to their desperate financial situation. They offer Ferdinand a bribe to certify the old woman as insane, but he declines their unethical proposition. Desperate for a solution, the Henry Wheels turn to Robinson, paying him to carry out the murder. However, Robinson's attempt goes awry, resulting in his own blindness from the failed bomb detonation near the shack. The Henry Wheels devise a plan to eliminate both Robinson and the old woman while ensuring that their scheme remains undisclosed to the police. Their proposal involves fleeing to Toulouse and working together at a mummy exhibit. In order to execute their plan, they bribe Ferdinand to convince Robinson to comply with their intentions. Reluctantly, Ferdinand agrees, and the peculiar duo is sent off on their journey. Struggling with his medical practice, Ferdinand decides to move to Montmartre and temporarily works as an extra in a music hall. During this time, an associate of the Henry Wheels tasks Ferdinand with checking on Robinson in Toulouse. To his surprise, Ferdinand discovers that Robinson's eyesight is gradually returning, and the old woman is excelling in her role at the mummy exhibit. 
Robinson is now engaged to a woman named Madeline, with whom Ferdinand engages in a short-lived affair. Tragedy strikes when the old woman dies from a fall down the stairs, implicating Robinson in her death. Fearing the consequences, Ferdinand flees to Luz and returns to Paris. There, he secures a job at a psychiatric hospital under the supervision of Dr. Baratin. Ferdinand teaches Dr. Baratin English, captivating him with tales of England to the extent that the doctor embarks on a journey, leaving Ferdinand in charge of the asylum. I in due course, Robinson arrives at the hospital, penniless and on the run from Madeline, who threatens to expose him to the authorities unless he marries her. Ferdinand offers Robinson employment and provides him shelter while he lays low. However, Madeline eventually catches up with Robinson. At the suggestion of his favorite nurse, Sophie, Ferdinand arranges a carnival outing for the four of them in hopes of alleviating tensions. They take a taxi ride home, during which Madeline persists in her pursuit of Robinson, ultimately shooting him. With Robinson's demise, Ferdinand is left to contemplate the troubles of life and the inherent meaninglessness of it all. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.